Welcome back to another SCBWI featured illustrator interview. My name is Tamika Grooms and I'm the design and illustration manager for SCBWI. Every month we select an illustrator member to spotlight on the SCBWI website and social media pages to highlight the work that they're doing in the children's illustration market. This month's featured illustrator is Kelly Ray Barr. Kelly, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good, wonderful. Well, I want to hop right on into this uh, interview. I'm so happy that you were able to be our featured illustrator um, for this month. Um, Sarah and I deliberated quite a bit to make sure that we got just the right person um, for this month's featured illustrator. And I'm glad that I was able to find your uh, illustrations on our website um, because they're so much fun. They're energetic. And I think it's going to be a nice little spark to add to the homepage. So thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to learn more about you and your work. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your creative, your journey into children's illustration? Um, is this something that you always wanted to do or how did you find your way to the point where you are now? Yeah, um, I've always been a drawer. Um, I, I did a lot of art growing up. My grandparents on my dad's side were both artists. And so art was just a part of life for me. And when I was about 12, I discovered I could draw pretty, pretty realistic renderings of portraits of people. And then from then on, I was, I was just so proud I was an artist too. Um, and so when I was choosing a, a degree in college, I, I thought I wanted to go into advertising. So I went into marketing with a minor in art. Um, and then I ended up transferring schools and they didn't have a minor in art. So I switched to graphic design as my major and then uh, business or marketing as my minor. Um, and from there, after I graduated, I did go into art advertising for a little while. And it was it was pretty fun, actually. I did enjoy it, but <laughs> it, it it wasn't long until I realized, you know, it wasn't it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. And I I always enjoyed the drawing and creating aspect a lot more of artwork. Um, and so I I knew I wanted to get into children's publishing and illustration and writing. Um, and so I kind of just got started practicing. And, and then I thought I got to a point where maybe I'm ready to try and get published. And, um, and so looking around, I found the SCBWI and joined there and realized, no, I was not ready <laughs> at all. I had a lot to learn. So I've done a ton of, of, uh, workshops and things through the SCBWI and learned a lot. And, um, you know, in, in that time I've done some illustration, other illustration, be it like kind of corporate stuff beyond children's illustration, but it really is the happy little children's illustrations that I love. Um, and and I, I kind of came to it also from a love for picture books and inspiration and from like the many amazing creators out there. Mm -hmm. And so how long have you been a member of SCBWI? Um, since 2016. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Um, you know, our, our, all of our journeys are very different. Um, I, I understand how you could also be interested in the advertising part of it. Um, I feel that way about, um, you know, marketing and, and, and design related to that part. But there's something about telling a story that is, is, is very different, especially when you have to do the same character over and over again. Um, that puts a different kind of spin on on storytelling. So um, I, I totally understand what you what you mean by that, and and going in the other direction as well. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about your your actual creative process. Like, how do you where do you get your inspiration from? What type of materials do you use? Um, most of my drawings, I try. Um, I write as well. So I try and, and illustrate something from something that I've written. Sometimes it's just a work in progress, little manuscript that I have, or sometimes it's a short little poem. Um, but that's generally where I get my kind of uh, illustrations, like my content from. Otherwise, you know, sometimes I see other things here and there from other, other illustrators and other creators. And I think, wow, that's amazing. And it gives me an idea of something else I want to do. Um, but I start everything with pencil. I draw everything in pencil first. I'm I'm very much a sketcher. So I, I don't draw with 
clean, clear lines at all. I sketch it out and then I kind of get it cleaner and cleaner as I go. Um, and then I, I use a lot of, I work in traditional mediums, so I use a lot of different art materials. I, anything from watercolor to gouache to oil pastels, to chalk pastels, um, colored pencils. I, I love it all. So I then fill in the coloring on my characters with whatever material I feel like <laughs> that day. And then I usually go in and outline it with, um, uh, a black colored pencil just to keep the, the lines nice and crisp and clear after I've done the color work. Then I scan it all in and um, I create the backgrounds separately and scan those in. And then I compose it all in Photoshop. So a lot of the design background that I had, I, I got pretty good with Photoshop. So it's just a, it's a, a tool that I'm comfortable with. And it's for me, it's easier to draw the characters separate from the background because then I can move them around and, and do my compositions that way and, and make it all just right. Whereas if I, you know, well, first of all, I'm not that wonderful of a watercolorist. So if I were going to try and paint around my characters, it wouldn't look so good. So, so that's kind of my cheater way of making it look nice and crisp and then also giving me um, freedom to move things around. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, you called yourself a drawer at the very beginning. I mm -hmm. think that's a perfect way to describe yourself. And that's what I really liked about your work, um, because you can see all of those not perfect ways of drawing. And that's, yeah. that's, not, a, that's not a dig or anything. That's actually a compliment. Because no, I, I, I know what you mean. And that really means a lot because I love I love people's sketches oftentimes more than their final product. Yeah. I love that character in them. Yeah, and I and I think you you keep the life in your drawing very very well. So um, so yeah, thank you for doing that because it I, like I felt all warm and fuzzy on the inside when I saw the art. I was like, yes, oh, that makes me so happy. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay. So um, one of the things I saw in your bio is that you also have some experience with art direction. Can you share a little bit about how you found your way into that as well? Yes. Um, so that was for, it was actually my brother-in-law who had a independent press um, for, and they, he, they, he was publishing mostly, um, it was a, in the adult market, but um, uh, short story collections mainly, but there was a few pieces that had um, some images and some artwork um, incorporated as well. And so I had the, any, any, small design studio knows you don't just wear one hat. So I was art director and designer. Um, and so basically the editor would come up with an idea. And so we would work together and discuss it and kind of kind of flesh out what the cover was really going to look like. And, and then I would go and I would design it. And sometimes I'd come up with two or three to choose from, and then we'd kind of refine from there. Um, but when it came to Oh, the pieces that had other artwork in it. There was some poetry mixed with some um, photography. And then there was also, we did a book for um, Tom Toro, who is a cartoonist for the New Yorker. And mm -hmm. he had lots and lots of wonderful artwork that I got to lay out into the pages. And I worked with him on kind of selecting what would be the best piece of his to put on the cover. And, um, and then kind of working with him on what what little elements he wanted to add throughout and how it could fit in the whole interior. Um, so that was that was very much a kind of small shop and I wore a lot of hats, but that was a lot of fun to do. And um, I, I just love books. So even just laying out the type within the center of the pages was fun for me. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. simple as it is. You know, listening to you, you just sparked a question that um, maybe some of the newer people who are illustrators might benefit from. Um, so you're working with someone to select their best pieces of art. What advice would, might you give to someone who is trying to curate their uh, portfolio to select the best pieces to show? Because a lot of times in the portfolios, you only get 10, 10 to 20 pieces tops to yeah. be able to show. Do you have any advice on that? I think, I mean, like variety is good. So showing, trying not to get two pieces that kind of hit the same target. Um, so enough variety to show just compositionally different things of what you like to illustrate. Um, 
But what I, for myself anyway, when I was choosing what to keep on my website and what to take off my website, is there's kind of that gut feeling mm -hmm. when you know you love a piece, but you know you're now doing something better than, than when you were when you started. And so you have to kind of listen to your gut on what pieces do you know you have done a better job on and versus, you know, you just have that tender tender spot for it because you love it, but you want to be putting out your best work. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And you know, those pieces that we love that might not be appropriate for our portfolio, we can print them and, and put them on our walls at home to appreciate too. So that's it a great idea. Actually, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a few on my walls that are not in my portfolio. So <laughs> yeah. So I want everybody to really get a look at your um, your portfolio on your website. So if we can just switch on over to that. Okay, Kelly, can you see your screen? I mean, your website? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have Kelly's work up on the screen. And I'm just gonna scroll through a few of these pictures. Um, again, I really like all the texture that you're bringing in. Um, in your in your drawings you can really see that the drawings are are showing through this actually was one that i looked at um with all the books because i thought it might look really nice on the uh, website but we we design wise we're looking at multiple things for the website so it's not just great art but we're also looking about placement and how it works with the rest of the site too so but i love that piece thank you and these characters are so fun with the uh characters coming out of the frames. <laughs> do you have a story for that one? Um, I do. Yeah. It's a little, it kind of just, it's kind of the typical, you know, monsters being misunderstood and a, a monster starts, comes to school one day and um, it, it kind of starts out as never be friends with a monster because of this and this and this and this. And then in the end you realize, oh, they're, they're great. <laughs> nice. Nice. That sounds like it needs to be published. I hope so. <laughs> um, let's let me see if I can find the one that's highlighted for today. It's probably there it's we go. Bottom, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this one, you know, it's it's characters, it's color, it's dancing, it's all of the things, and I just so much love the energy of all of that put together. Um, it. It just felt good when I looked at it. So um, I'm so happy we were able to, to do this one. Does this one have a story or is this just like a kind of one-off piece? This one doesn't have a story. It's a one-off piece. It was one I, I specifically created for my portfolio because I didn't feel like I had something that represented uh, characters in space without a, a solid setting. And so I kind of set out to create it for that purpose. Yeah. But I'm constantly drawing characters dancing. I, I love drawing animals dancing, people dancing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a it was a fun one to do. Yeah, yeah. And you also have a background in dance as well. I do, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that kind of pops in from <laughs> yeah, time to time. <laughs> <laughs> so I really want you all to take a look at um at uh, Kelly's website. She's got some really great sketch work so you can see where some of the color images evolved from. Um, there's lots to learn about her design work and um, in her bio. So please make sure you uh, check out the website. Um, Kelly, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna share a whole lot more because I really want them to go to the website. Okay. Um, before we go, I want you to share how do you balance all the things because <laughs> I, I read in your bio that you're a mother, a wife, um, you, you do all these things that are creative and you like to illustrate as well. How do you find your balance in doing all those things? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I only get to do a little bit of everything, I guess. Um, my kids take precedence and they've, my daughter is now six and first grade. So last year was the first year that I had daytime because my kids were home with me before school. So I had the daytime last year to, um, I thought, get a lot done, but it turned out I, I need to learn some time management when I've got so much time. <laughs> it was easier when all I had was this much time. I could, I knew what to do and I could get it done fast. So, um, you know, I get the kids off to school in the morning. I get 
the tasks that need to get done, <laughs> done. And then when I can, I find time to draw. Um, and I, I draw during the daytimes as much as I can. And then it's, you know, kids come home and it's time for me to take my daughter down to dance. And when she's there, I teach. So that's kind of how it all balances out. Um, and I'm, I've been teaching part-time for almost 20 years and it's, it's kind of just my way to stay active and healthy. And it's another passion of mine, of course, but it, it's, um, it's something that I love to do, but it's not something that takes up all of my time. So that does leave me enough time to pursue another, another thing. And I don't know that I would be happy doing a hundred percent of just, just illustrating or just teaching. Um, I think I, I like the variety. It keeps me excited for, for create creatively both things. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally relate to that. Um, I'm a, a Jill of all trades <laughs> and I love to keep all the balls in the air. Um, but I agree with you. It does keep it, um, it keeps life interesting, you know? So, yeah. 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 So, um, so I would like for you to uh, share with everybody how they can learn more about your work. I know we shared your website, but tell them what your website is and any of your socials and anything else you'd like to share about your work. Please take this time to do that. Okay. Um, my website is kellyraybar.com. I'm on Instagram at krb.illustration. And I've been taking a little bit of break there, but I will get back to it someday. And I'm also on Twitter and um, Blue Sky at Kelly Ray Bar. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. So you all go check out her work. And Kelly, thank you so much for being here with me. It's been a wonderful interview and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much.